All right. Thanks, everyone, for coming. This talk is going to be about Bbot, which is a new OSINT tool. I'm Joel, aka the TechRomancer. I'm a pen tester, and I work for Black Lantern Security. We like making tools. So um, we've made a few other tools, tools like Trevor Spray and Right Hat, which is a reporting tool. Um, but Bbot is our latest one. So um, Bbot is an OSINT framework. Um, it's pretty new. This slide is slightly outdated, but we released it um, within the past couple months. It's inspired by Spiderfoot, if you've ever used that. But basically, when we set out to make Bbot, we wanted to make it different from Spiderfoot in that um, it is designed by hackers for hackers and designed very specifically to be used on pen tests and bug bounties. So if you want to know more about sort of the differences between Bbot and Spiderfoot and why we decided to make a separate tool, you can check out the Any Port on the Net podcast where um, there's an episode where I talk about it and go into more detail. Bbot is written in Python. As of today, it has over 60 modules, and it's a command line tool. Since it's written in Python, you can just do pip install bbot, and then you're good to go with that bbot command line utility. Bbot automates the entire OSINT process and more, all the way from the beginning for things like subdomain enumeration, email gathering, port scanning, web screenshots, all the way up to vulnerability scanning. I'll explain how all this works later, but the, the, the takeaway is that it can do all of this in one command, and it does it recursively. So um, I apologize for this GIF. It's a little bit weird and uncomfortable, I know. But it sort of illustrates the way that um, the way that Bbot performs OSINT, which is basically that if it finds something like a subdomain, it will do everything to that subdomain. It'll do port scans on it. It'll visit the website. It'll check the SSL certs. And then if it finds any more subdomains from that process, it'll do it all over again to those subdomains and again and again infinitely. So th this, this whole uh, presentation is basically just demos. So it um, looked like your internet was doing pretty well. So hopefully this will work well. But I have videos recorded if it does not. So all right, so we're going to start off with a simple Bbot scan. We're going to run it against spacex.com. And we're just going to run one module, which is the HTTPX module. Some of you may have used HTTPX, it's a tool by Project Discovery, and it's basically just intended to visit web pages. OK. So I apologize in advance for, this, for the uh, <laughs> scan names. Um, scan names in Bbot have a totally random name. So just like Docker containers, random adjective, random noun. Some of them can be awkward and strange. Um, I did not pick these. All right, so um, as you can see, we're getting data. So we started off with SpaceX.com. And um, it's basically a simple scan that just visits the website. But all of this data that you're seeing is Bbot gathering data on that one domain and that one website. So it's pulling every type of DNS record for SpaceX.com. It's visiting the website. And it's extracting links um, that are embedded in the website. You can see it has links to Starlink, Instagram. Flickr, all that type of stuff. And then that's it. It finished. Um, all right. So a uh, quick aside. So one of the features of Bbot that's unique to Bbot that I guess most other OSINT tools and OSINT frameworks don't include is that it has the ability to install its dependencies automatically. So for example, Bbot has a a HTTPX module, which you just saw. It has a Go Witness module. So all of these modules that depend on other tools, right? Like Go Witness, which is written in Go. Um, so obviously, you know, um, you have to have some way of downloading those binaries on your system. Bbot does that automatically. Literally, you pip install Bbot and you run your scan, and every every module that you enable will automatically download its dependencies and install them with Ansible. And that includes OS packages and Python packages. So, all right, so Bbot supports multiple targets. Our third demo is, or sorry, our second demo is actually going to be Neo4j. OK, so we don't want to do the full subnet. Um, it's going to take too long. So this is demoing basically two features of Bbot at the same time. Number one, the feature where it can target multiple targets at the same time. So we're doing www.spacex 
www.starlink.com. The other feature that we're demoing here is the feature that allows it to output to multiple formats simultaneously. So if you're familiar with Spiderfoot, you know that Spiderfoot outputs to SQLite, and um, you can export it to CSV if you want. But um, essentially, with Bbot, you can output to all of these formats at the same time. So we're going to output to human, which is just the text format, JSON, CSV, and Neo4j all at the same time. And Neo4j is a lot of fun. We'll get into that a little later. OK, didn't take too long. OK, so we're going to look at this data in Neo4j. OK, so um, just to explain sort of what you're looking at here. So uh, Neo4j is a graphing database. It's the same database that Bloodhound uses, if you've ever used that. But essentially, um, it, it's, sort of a, it's sort of a better way to look at the data that Bbot generates. Because Bbot is recursive, you know, it can be deceiving to see it spit out in sort of a, a scroll of text when the, the data is really represented more accurately like this. So, um, every node here corresponds to a line of text on the console. Um, so if we go back to the console, at the beginning we have www.spacex.com, which is a DNS name. And so if we go back here, we have www.spacex.com. So this is the same thing. But essentially, we had, we had two targets, right? On the left, SpaceX. On the right, Starlink. But one of the interesting things about displaying this in Neo4j is that you can sort of see the relationships between these two entities. www.spacex and www.starlink, they share a lot of IP addresses. So they have DNS records that point to the same place. So you know that's a pretty heavy indication that um, these two companies are related, which they are. Demo 3, Web Spider. What we're going to do here is we're going to target just one target, um, but we're going to enable the Web Spider. So this is pretty self-explanatory. Essentially, we're going to also put this into Neo4j. Here we go. OK, so we're starting to see URLs come back. Um, so you can see that it, it found the website on SpaceX.com, and it's starting to visit the, the links to um, Spider that website. OK, so a bigger graph that we're working with here. But um, what I'll do is I'll just sort of explain, starting from the very beginning, how it was able to sort of derive all of this. So this orange one at the beginning is where we started. This is our scan. We told it to target SpaceX.com. Um, so here's SpaceX.com. What happened was the blue ones, by the way, the blue ones are DNS names. From the SpaceX.com DNS name, what happened was it tried port 443, which by default, if you don't enable a port scanner, it's just going to do 80 and 443. So it found that open port. It found a web service on that, on that port. It visited the website. So these lines between the nodes, these relationships, represent modules. So as you can see, our open port basically um, ended up producing this URL, the green being URL. And HTTPX was the module that found that URL. Um, so then from there, HTTPX is able to get a, looks like it gets a redirect, and you end up at www. And then from here, you spider out. And so you're starting to see other parts of SpaceX's website, like slash mission and slash careers and human space flight, that type of thing. So this can be useful if you're wanting to extract um, OSINT information from a website Vbot automatically extracts things like emails, 
even things like clear text JavaScript secrets, it'll recognize things like API keys and pull those out for you as well. All right, so our fourth demo is going to be subdomain enumeration. Um, this is something that Bbot is pretty good at. Um, we spend a lot of time and effort into really improving the subdomain enumeration capability of Bbot. And the reason for that is because when you're doing OSINT, um, and especially when you're doing OSINT for a pen test or a bug bounty, subdomain enumeration is, is one of the first things that you do, and everything else that you do hinges on that. So if you, if you are looking for a website with a vulnerability, um, and that website is on a sort of a weird subdomain, um, if you don't find that subdomain, you're absolutely not going to find that vulnerability. So it's important that, that you get as many subdomains as you can. All right, here we go. So it's finding quite a bit. And again, you know, because it's recursive, every subdomain that it finds, it's going to visit the website. And it's going to extract subdomains from that. It's going to visit those subdomains forever and ever, you know, inside the scope that you defined. So we define, you know, anything that's spacex.com is in scope. And the other thing that we enabled on here was we enabled the Wappalizer module. So this isn't a vulnerability scan. Um, Wappalizer um, basically just analyzes what technologies are in use on the website, um, which can be useful if you're looking for um, websites to poke at during a pen test. Um, you can see. It's finding these technologies, you know, Apache, Windows Server, IIS, that sort of thing. So if we go and look at this in um, Neo4j, um, it's going to be a lot of nodes. It's probably going to be a little bit laggy. Um, this this can get pretty crazy. So the, the, I I love I love just like swimming around in this data um, and seeing how different things are discovered because it can be pretty illuminating. But also, um, you do have an upper limit for how many nodes you can render. You can, you can literally put hundreds of thousands of nodes in Neo4j and query it without a problem, but um, you cannot render it in the GUI. So that's sort of the, the downside. We're starting to hit the upper limit here. OK, so, so the question was, can you limit the depth of the subdomains? And uh, the answer is yes. There's multiple ways you can do that. Um, number one is you can enable strict mode if you only want to target a specific. So say, say I want to target www.spacex.com, but not subdomains of that. I can enable strict mode, and it would only target that. But you can also choose, because there's this concept in Bbot of scope distance. So you have your scope. Anything that's one hop away from your main scope is a, is a scope distance of one. So by default, Bbot um, shows you everything up to one hop away. But you can say, show me everything up to two hops away or zero hops away. So config configurable. There's a YAML file. You can configure it to your heart's content. Um, but anyway. So, so the data that we're looking at, this horrible satanic web of just nodes, basically the, the blue ones are DNS names. Um, so you can see that we started off finding a whole bunch of DNS names. From DNS names, we found open ports. From open ports, we found URLs. And from URLs, we found technologies. Um, these blue ones um, down here are technologies. This website is returns.spacex.com. It's running Ruby and Ruby on Rails. So. We can look at it in the graph. And that's that. OK, so okay, so another side note on subdomain enumeration. I added this slide last minute. But just this week, um, I wrote a blog post on Bbot because, because we spent a lot of time sort of you know, polishing the subdomain enumeration portion of Bbot and writing all those modules. We wanted to see how it compares to a lot of other subdomain enumeration modules out there. Um, so I did a benchmark. I compared it against. You know, the other big ones like Amass, Harvester, and all that good stuff. And here's a graph of the results. So um, you can check out our blog post if you want to know the full, basically, the, um, the rules and sort of how we set up the lab environment to test these. But, but the takeaway is that Bbot found more subdomains than any other subdomain tool that we could find. So as of right now, and this was for Tesla.com, um, which is a medium-sized company, has you know, around 400 subdomains. So, um, so yeah, we're very proud of, of Bbot. 
and its subdomain enumeration. All right. So um, our last example is subdomains and web screenshots. Um, so Bbot uses GoWitness to take web screenshots. And um, like I said at the beginning of this uh, presentation, you know, um, you can execute all of this in one command. Um, so the value, you know, you can do subdomain enumeration and port scanning and, you know, detect web services and do web screenshots all at one time. One thing that I'm doing different with this command is I'm defining the name of the scan. Um, so you can override the name if you don't want it to be some weird random one. And then you can output it to wherever you want. So in this case, we're telling it to output all of its results to the current directory. All right, so we can go into we can go into go witness and watch these come in. Okay, so we're starting to see data. There we go. So um, so yeah, you know, um, depending on what your OSINT process is, you know, if you're used to doing things in phases, starting off with subdomain enumeration then doing port scanning and you know all that sort of thing, and then finally doing web screenshots. The, the appeal of doing it with Bbot is not only that it can do it all at one time, um, but it, that it can do it recursively. So you know, if it gets the very last step, and at the very last step it finds a new subdomain, it's going to start over with that subdomain and do everything that it did to all the other ones um, until there's basically no subdomains left. Um, so anyway, most of you probably know about GoWitness already, but it integrates with Bbot, and uh, it's just useful for getting an idea of um, what websites a company has out on the internet. It lets you see them all at a at a at a glance without visiting them. So as you can see, it's just you know finding all the SpaceX websites, um, finding some login pages, finding an ADFS, so all sorts of juicy things. But yeah, that's its GoWitness module. And um, and finally. Vulnerability scanning. So this is the last piece to it. Um, it's not something that I can demo here, but um, Bbot does integrate with Nuclei, which is an awesome vulnerability scanner. You know, it's made primarily for web. You know, it's big in the bug bounty space. Pen testers use it all the time. We are big fans of it. But yeah, basically you, you can enable Nuclei too. And um, it's very configurable. You know, you can pass through which templates you want to run, um, but by default, it just runs basically everything that's not intrusive. So, uh, I, I, you know, like I said, I can't demo this, um, but I can share a success story. Just last month, one of our operators got three shells in one day um, with the Telerik module that uh, that Bbot uses. So, not not even Nuclei, but one of the unique Bbot modules that we wrote. Um, my my coworker Paul, who's a really good um, web hacker, he basically wrote some web modules that find some other um, hidden hidden goodies for you. So highly encourage you to run those as well. And everything at once. So so every every example, every demo that we did can be run at the same time with this nice big command at the bottom here. So all this is saying is, yeah, so fire up Bbot, tell it to do subdomain enumeration, give it multiple targets if you want. Tell it to do port scanning. So for every subdomain, it'll do a port scan. For every open port, it'll look for a web server. For every web server, it'll do go witness, it'll do Wapalizer, and it'll run Nuclei. And do it all in one command. And starts to look like this. So yeah, pretty crazy. All right, so yeah, so basically that's it. You know, in conclusion, Bbot is an OSINT tool, but you know, it's also a lot more than an OSINT tool. We, we had a lot of fun writing it, and uh, we have a lot of fun using it, too. So we hope you have fun with it as well. Please enjoy responsibly. Thank you. Uh, any questions? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so um, we, uh, in our readme, um, we have examples, ex example commands, um, a list of all the modules. And we also have a wiki for more advanced things. but. Um, also, you know, you can pip install bbot and then do a bbot tac l, and it will um, it'll list all the modules for you right there.
All right. Thanks.